Well, tell me what a what a week or what a year it's been. Oh man, it has been. There are days they say that uh, days that seems to, to to cover a thousand years, and there's a thousand years that seem to happen in a day. Yeah. And uh, last week has been one of those. A whole lot going on. Well, I know we woke up Wednesday morning to a, a change. We've got all this behind us, and I'm. I don't know about you guys out there that are listening, but I suspect that you guys are really glad that this whole season is behind us and now we can get on with our real lives and really focus on what really matters and that's supporting our families and and uh, loving one another and uh, hopefully uh, doing something with chickens and bee vacuums. And uh, you know I'm so glad I'm not getting the, the phone calls, the text messages, the emails, the, the signs everywhere and people yelling at each other. And now the weird thing is, uh, today's Thursday, two days after, the, Friday, sorry, three days after the election. Yeah. And um, my wife is still getting text messages and phone calls on some of this, which <laughs> she was mad before. Now she's really mad. But wait, one more thing. Normally we just do the videos and I do very little editing. If you see moments where we pause and stop, and I'll try to have some fun with it. Um, there's probably, we don't want to get into the national election because half of you are going to be mad at us. And then the, we're going to say something else, and the other half will be mad at you. And it's like, there's an old saying that says, if you take your two feet and have two buckets of water, one's boiling water, one's near ice water, you put one foot in each bucket, on average, you're not comfortable. And we just don't need to go there. Yeah, we're not going to get into, you know, my belief's better than your belief, or your belief is better than mine. You know, we live in this world together. Uh, the, there's only two commandments in the Bible, and that really matter and the, the Lord says that all the commandments fall on these and that's the love the Lord your God with all your mind body and soul and love your neighbor as yourself and so uh, we just need to leave all that other stuff alone so it doesn't much matter to me you know what your beliefs are as long as it's rooted in in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and really that's on you that's not on me and so uh, we do we do come at this like you know, we're all affected by the election, by, by the way, uh, no matter who won or lost. Everybody's affected by it. And so we're in this together. And uh, as long as we can stay united to make our families, uh, you know, better than they were yesterday, we're going in the right direction. And so uh, I know this local election here, man, it's really affected us. Yeah. So keep in mind, we are in Lockhart, Texas, which is uh, Caldwell County. It's famous for one thing. We are the barbecue. Barbe <laughs> barbecue, yeah. So if any of you know of Black's Barbecue or Terry Black's or Kreitz's or Smitty's, all of them originated right and here. And if you're local, you know who Chisholm Trail Barbecue Chisholm Trail is. Yep, That's yep. the local. It's, they're, yep. they're not shabby either, by the way. No. Well, they had a few a rough stage. But, you know, we are, but, we are a country town. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're small, rural for the most part. But we are just south of Austin, and Austin has really kind of moved in and changed uh, the it, atmosphere. It here. actually has. And, you know, Merle Haggard sang a song about Muskogee, Oklahoma. We don't smoke marijuana in Muskogee, and we don't take our trips on LSD. Now, you may not know that song, but Merle Haggard's the one that made it famous. And um, we used to kind of think that that's how Lockhart was, but it's really not. I mean, people do smoke a lot of pot in this area, and... Uh, I can't say that it's really hurt the area all that much, except that it does lead to harder things. And so legalizing it is not really a probably a good thing. I think people ought to just, if they're going to do it, just do it like they've always done it. But we just did not need uh, more things that draw our young people in a direction they shouldn't be done. In. But unfortunately, yeah, our, our even, county has done that. If federally, marijuana is illegal in the state of Texas. It's illegal other than medical. And a couple of cities like Austin, and now our now, this only got voted in the small town of Lockhart. Yeah. Not for the county because the county would have it would have failed at the county level. Hey, you go 20 miles the other direction and you're <laughs> you're going to get locked up. Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's, 10. It's really weird. Actually, it's, here. Yeah. You get locked up because we're outside of town. And did you see those jokers that were on the square promoting it? No, I didn't. Oh, they were wiped out of their minds. <laughs> <laughs> and they were eating crackers and cookies and potato chips like they were going out of style. You well, know? That's such a surprise. Yeah, really. But, in, in, in terms of, so there was a couple of big things. Yeah. And, and here's where, um, I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but I will tell you that 
you know, our two little votes on the national scale weren't even a drop in the ocean. No, they wouldn't. On your local level, and let me put it at a different scale, a couple of different things. We, you know, we just talked about the the the, uh, the, the marijuana passing. It's now legal to have a small amount. I don't know the details. Yeah. However, um, in our county, we had a vote for a hundred and fifty million dollars oh. to go into road improvements. Hundred and fifty million. Get that. Get that in your mind. That's a lot of money, folks. I'm a math guy, and let me do some math. We had 15,000 people vote, and about two-thirds of them voted that, yes, we want to spend $150 and $50 million. dollars. You have to say it, million. Yeah, and they didn't, even, they didn't even really specify what they're going to do to these roads, just that they're going to improve them. So that could be anywhere from pinstriping them to fixing a hole. They had a map that had stars on it. I know. But none were near me. There, no, yeah, they were not near me either. <laughs> I still live on a gravel road, folks. So, <laughs> so, um, but here's the here's where it matters. Fifteen thousand people voted total to spend one hundred and fifty million dollars. In other words, each vote was basically a ten thousand dollar. Are you going to spend this or not? And I voted no on it. Um, well, I did as well. Yeah, I did as well. But we were, I might have been okay with it if they had really shown us how they could how we're going to pay it back, but. It's like all these things. When you vote for these things that seem like they're good for your community, it ends up people paying more taxes than they should. And uh, we just had the ACs, the community college thing here in our community as well. We had that too. And yes. we only have about 100 people every year that really go to the community college. 129. 129, okay. And that's an exact number, by the way. We did look that up. So 129 people last year actually attended the, the community college. Well, when you allow a community college to come into your city, you're actually uh, creating an entire taxing authority over your private property. And so for 129 people, they'll probably collect an ungodly amount of money, and, and, uh, which just, just doesn't make any sense. I think the county would have been better off if we had just, each person that's going to ACC just given them a, a, a grant to go to school. Yeah. You know, Here, here's, and, here's 50 bucks. Or, and actually, or even 10,000. It would still be a bargain. Well, it wouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're griping, but let me just, again, math matters. And here's where, look at your local elections and see if it works. We have 129 people, and they went from uh, 280, like $285 per credit hour to $85. Yeah. So they were going to save $200 per credit hour, <laughs> taking an average of seven credit hours per semester. As a taxing base, um, our community is now going to pay about four million dollars more. I'm not sure these guys are following this. Well, <laughs> I'll put it this way: we're going to spend four hundred million dollars. I'm sorry, four million dollars to save a bunch of kids, younger folks. 129, by the way. 129 of them, uh, about four hundred thousand dollars. So we're spending ten dollars for every dollar of benefits. I can do the math and say, eh. That is not a good investment plan. And I've even read where there's going to be less people going to colleges going forward than there were in the past just because of the way the colleges are structured nowadays and the lack of jobs and being able to pay the, the stuff back when you get when you get out. So yeah. It's, yeah. there's just it makes no sense. But, you know, that's that's our government, you know, and that's our <laughs> that's the way it goes. And we got to laugh about it. You know, Getting, getting mad at your neighbor or getting upset or getting your anxiety level where you have to have calming drugs to calm you down is just not a good way to go. Just just laugh it off, give it to the Lord, hand it over, and however you deal with it, don't deal with it in anger. Don't take it out on your neighbor because they voted differently than you. Uh, just just realize that we're all different and let's just move on. You know, we've been talking about politics a lot. We need to switch gears. Yeah, winter's yeah. coming. Winter is coming, I'm telling you what. And uh, actually, it's here. It's down to 70 around here. Well, this morning... It might be 80 right now. It's supposed to be in the 80s today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Sorry for you people up north. <laughs> yeah, it's. but this is winter for us. So, you know, and uh, my wife actually put a jacket on today. It got down to 80. Oh, actually, this morning it was in the 70s. But she'll be wearing a jacket all day in the 80s, and I know it's a lot of you women out there who are, are who have really kept yourself in good shape. You you got to put some clothes on to keep warm.
Meanwhile, we're here in t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm, and I am warm. So, but and it's nine o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning. That's right. Yeah, it is a little warm. But you know, people when they when they build their chicken coops, uh, certainly uh, up north we hear a lot about uh, can I insulate my coop or can I make it airtight because I don't want the I don't want the birds to get cold. And quite frankly, with you, the birds do need some ventilation more than you would imagine. And they can handle temperatures down to almost zero degrees. And so um, it's not a good idea to, to make your coop airtight, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, and, and I'll add a second thing. Yeah. Probably the, after some of the predators out there, oh, yeah. the number two cause of chickens dying in wintertime is coops that burn down. People are putting all these infrared heaters. And um, you, know, you, you think with your house you want to insulate it because that's good for our house, right? houses. However, in the coop, the, the, they're pooping. <laughs> we don't poop all over our house, and the fumes that come off of that are bad for you. Well, that's what chicken coops are. Well, it, yeah, and those fumes that come up, can, uh, if they're not properly cleaned out, which during the winter time, most of us don't really clean that up because it does provide a certain amount of heat through the composting effect of, 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 of that. And so that composting effect can actually lower the temperature, I mean raise the temperature in your coop quite a bit actually. Uh, but making it airtight means that those hazardous fumes stay in there. Your birds breathe those things. They do get sick. Many times they can even die without the proper ventilation. And there's been several instances where uh, owners have gone in their coop to clean it up that were shut up like that and the dust and the fumes made them so sick they nearly died. Uh, there's been several people hospitalized because of that. So don't don't make your coops airtight, really. It's it's I understand you think it's cold, but God made these animals to survive in cold weather and I'm not suggesting that you uh, you put your birds out when it's 20 or 30 below, uh, but certainly down to 20 or even 10, uh, your birds can can adjust to that with the proper food and the proper water. Yep. And and uh, let me answer a question we get all the time about our doors because you said you know 20 or 30 below. Yeah. So we actually worked with a couple of customers, and this is several years ago. Yeah. Uh, one lived in Minnesota, one lived in Wisconsin, and they installed the doors. And both, you know, we wanted to monitor in real world, world conditions because down here, it doesn't get cold. Coldest we get is a freezer down to zero. Um, My freezer doesn't even get to zero. It's so hot in the garage. So. Well, it could be. <laughs> so, um, with the two guys up in, in the, uh, the Arctic Circle, I'll just call it that, uh, the weather got into the minus 20, minus 25 range, and that was the actual temperature. I don't know what the wind chill was, but God help you with that. Um, but the doors kept working flawlessly yep. all the way down to that minus 25 range. Right. And I can't imagine chickens go out that much at that temperature. So. Yeah, I mean, I realize chickens have a small head and a small brain, but God did give them enough sense to to drink water and to stay uh, out of those those kinds of environments. So. Yeah. Now turkeys might be a little different. Yeah, turkeys are a little bit different. You <laughs> it's know. drowning in the rain. Okay. If you have turkeys, God bless you. I, I tried that, it didn't work for me. We uh, joke now that, <laughs> you know, this month, all the turkey doors that we sell, those are what we call the lucky turkeys. They are lucky turkeys. They? <laughs> They're gonna make it through Thanksgiving. Yeah, you know, turkeys are really cool though. I mean, they, they do things that other chickens don't. They're very entertaining. And uh, I've never had turkeys. Well, I, I actually found some turkey eggs in the field one time. I was shredding the, shredding the pastor, and I ran over a whole nest of turkey eggs, and unfortunately, I didn't break any of them. And my grandson said, hey, let's try to hatch them out. So I never had turkey. I said, sure. So we threw them in the incubator, and they, by golly, they did hatch out. But the problem with those turkeys is that the coyotes seem to like them quite a bit. And uh, I had a hard time uh, keeping, I was able to finally keep a few, but they are just really curious and, they're, and uh, they don't really scatter as quickly as a chicken will. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll hang out and they'll, they actually are pr pr pretty cool birds. Uh -huh. Okay. I know I've had uh, geese in the past. The geese are actually, um, one of the benefits of putting one or two geese with your flock 
is they will act like uh, like a guard dog. They are. Man. Yeah, they, they'll they, bite you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're guarding against hawks, and they'll guard against us yeah. too. Yeah, I, I got my calf bit pretty good. I just I didn't think they could bite that hard, but yep. by golly, they can. Yep. You so. can't terrorize a small child. <laughs> the best way to do it is put them by a goose. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that, okay. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go doing that. Uh, but another thing that happens as it starts, you know, the, the days get longer in summer and shorter in winter. Now, one thing, if, if let me just hit politics for just a second. If we had a politician that would step up and say, Daylight savings time is now vanished or, or vanquished. They would get 87 percent of the votes. Well, you know you're right, and there's I think at least one state, maybe two, that don't really do that. But yeah, you know, I've never talked to anybody that likes this change. So I don't know how we got here and why we're staying here, but obviously it's not a really big issue. So that's a national conversation. Yeah, a that, national and we'll stop conversation. the national conversation yeah. there. Yeah. But as the days are getting shorter, in those little bitty chicken brains, they're up there and they're thinking. Okay, it's winter time. I'm gonna stop laying, and take a break. Mm -hmm. And those breaks can be, gosh, four months, five months. Yeah, I know. Uh, my my flock went from getting about a, two dozen eggs a day, and we're only getting two or three. Yep. And so I've okay. I've had to install. Or I actually already had them installed, but I started using the lights again. Yep. And uh, we went from the two or three, about to about eight or nine. It's still not what it was, but it definitely increased. And so um, the, the lights do work, they do help. And, and, uh, and let's explain what you mean by lights. Okay, our lights are programmable. And here's a controller, uh, it's upside down. Yeah, there, there's the controller. Here's one of the lights. And uh, it all just plugs in, the lights plug in, the power plugs in. But you can uh, take this thing and program when you want the lights to turn on and when you want them to turn off. You can program it to be different each day or you can just turn the light on and off as you want to get in there and count the birds or clean the coop. So it's a really great, great product. We do make these things here. Uh, we do all the soldering and all the assembly. And, and uh, so this is one of our things. And, and uh, it's a really great, great product. And I don't think there's, there's some other stuff on the market like this, but uh, they're not really sealed like this for chicken coops. And, uh, but the only bad thing about the, our, our, our light kit is that this controller right here has to be out of the weather. And the light can be out in the, out in the weather, yeah. but the, bo the controller box needs to be in a weather protected area. But, but in reality, the thing is designed to be inside, inside the coop. Inside the coop, yeah. And really what you want to do is turn on the light in the morning. You really don't want to have light going into the evening hours because then the chickens stay up and they may not, they may get locked out of the coop. But you know, let's say sunrise is 7 a.m., so you have the light turn on at 4, turn off about 7, and that'll, it's going to be, they're not really bright lights that you can sit there and read by. These are just little 3 watt light bulbs. But with that light, it'll kind of wake the chickens up and get them working inside the coop, and that makes them think the days are still longer, so you're tricking them to lay eggs. And you really want it to come on in the morning, not at night. Yep. Uh, if you have it come in at night, they may not stay in the coop, and then they will get eaten. So don't don't extend the evening time. Just make sure you do the morning time, and that way they'll stay in the coop. And many times they'll just lay the egg while, they're, while the lights are up, and uh, so they'll get that over with so they can go on throughout the day. Yep. I see you've got a pretty good-sized solar panel over here that we use to keep the battery charged. So. Yeah, so a lot of people don't have power at their coop, so you right. can't plug this in. However, we have a solution for that. It's a 15 watt solar panel, yeah. and we there's a charge controller that'll go with it. So it's got a stand that'll go there, and that panel just keeps the battery. It, it puts out enough power so you can run a, one or two of these lights for a few hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, and you can mount this thing many ways. You can mount it on the roof. You can mount it on the side of the coop. Uh, with this handy little bracket, it's uh, pretty universal, really. Yeah, it's yeah. A, and it's powerful enough that. Um, it, it'll give you enough power to keep the door running. Um, and, and the lights on. Yeah, with, with the lights. Because especially you get to farther north or a place like Seattle where it's just overclouded a lot. You know, a lot of people think that lights don't use very much electricity, and uh, that's just not true. They do, they do use quite a bit of electricity. So yeah. uh, on our light kit, we try not to sell a battery with that because you, you really should go down to 
a Walmart or a place like that and buy the U series lawn and garden batteries. I think they got a cranking app of 330 or 240 or something like that. Uh, no, but, don't get the one that's 240, get the better one that's 3 something. I know, but our half the time ours doesn't have that one. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, but you're right. Uh, yeah. You, when you buy a battery, you're paying for, for amperage. I so. bought one or two of those, and they're like $30, the 240 cold cranking amps. And I'm sorry, that was before the dollar was trash. They, you know, yeah, so it might be a little more. Dirty. Might be a little bit more, but yeah. they're in that. But anyways, <laughs> that thing didn't last six months. Got another one that didn't last six months. Got the one that's ten, fifteen dollars more, and that one lasted for a few years. Yeah, the last one I bought was about a year ago, and I think I paid forty-five dollars for that okay. bigger one. So, better one. Got so it. it's it's worth the forty-five. So anyway, with the light kit, if you got a door and you want a light kit and you want to operate it all together, it's the same thing. Uh, it's a great combination. And, uh, and, and, and it really doesn't cost that much. The whole kit and everything with the solar panel is what, $125, $135? Uh, $145, I think. $145? Yeah. yeah. And it's really, it's it's a lot cheaper than digging a trench and running wire and, and, and burying it and conduit. I mean, it's it's, it's actually, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good deal. And, and like Mark said, having a light in the coop, if, you know, especially, <laughs> there was a song that, uh, Oh, it goes has a line that says, "Hello, darkness, my old friend." <laughs> yeah, and with daylight savings time, I gotta go there again. Yeah. Someone added a second verse that said, uh, "Now I'll see you at 5 p.m." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you're getting home and it's dark, you go out and get eggs. Turn this light on, because the worst feeling you have when you reach into a uh, when the nests is feeling that skin of a snake. Yeah, you know, this type of year, I mean, down here, we do have copperheads and we have, uh, uh, we call them rat snakes. I don't know what y'all might call them, but we call them rat snakes. The rat snakes aren't, aren't very venomous. They, they can bite you and it hurts, but it's not going it, to, it's not a, it's not a venomous snake. But the copperheads are. And we've had several people reach in there to get eggs and there was a copperhead in there and they got bit. And uh, so it's a good idea to carry a flashlight if you don't have one of these. Uh, at least a look what's in the nest before you reach your hand in there. So yeah. this during the winter time, snakes are they're moving around, and people say, "Oh no, they don't do much during the winter." Well, that's that's partially true, but they still they still eat and they still can they can get you. So you just yeah. need to be very careful. Well, up north, I think the snakes hibernate. Down here, they're still going. Yeah, I, that's I guess you're probably right, but. Uh, the good and bad of being in the but, south. But down here, they never stop. So, you know, hibernation here is just they take a good nap and they wake up the next day. So they don't ever seem to stop. Yep. Uh, but that's really what we have this week. And and uh, I'll just say it again. I'm so glad that all of this um, animosity towards one another because of this whole election, this whole political cycle, it's absolutely been awful. I'm. I'm almost, I'm 68 years old this year, and I've never seen it this visceral in my life. So I, uh, I'm i glad it's behind me. I'm just really glad. And we can get back to fishing, we can get back to hunting, we can get back to playing baseball and football and, and uh, just enjoying one another's company without all this junk that's been separating us. Yeah, yeah. So, See, I've, I've been kind of immune to all this hatred of politics <laughs> because I'm so used to my bees hating on me. So I'm, oh. I'm kind of, I have an immunity to that. I still love them. They still hate me. We get along great. Yeah. If people can learn the same thing with each other, it'll be a better country. Yeah, that brings up another point. You know, we hadn't really talked much about the bees, but there's some prep work that you really should be, should have already done, actually. Yeah. And if you haven't done it, you probably need to get up and do it. And, and just actually, kind of walk us through a couple of those things that, that right. are really critical right now. So um, one of the biggest mistakes I think people make is they will wrap up their beehive and, and insulate it really really well which in one way is good the only bad part of that is it moisture just like the moisture in the in the coop you get mold and things Ooh, well, that, sound, with, that sounds bad well it's even worse with, with bees because the, the cluster of bees is here they're producing heat and moisture rises hits the top condenses, oh, yeah. drips ice cold water on them, and that will devastate colonies. Yeah. It's always good to have just a little vent point up top to let some of that moisture out. Good stuff. Um, and then of course, uh, we're as a nation right now, we're in a bit of a drought. So you're 
I know locally, the fall flow of nectar just didn't happen. Yeah. We went a month and a half plus without a drop of rain. And um, Many areas are still in that cycle yes, right now. Yes, much of the nation still yeah. is. Yeah. We had an inch or two last week, and God willing, we're going to get a little bit more. It's overcast today. But um, check your hives, and if you need to feed them, I know sugar's not cheap, but um, it's cheaper to feed them than replace them. Yeah. So those are probably the biggest things that I'd... And I'd like to close with uh, one one request for you, the few of you that are that watch us is that we we do chickens and we do bees, and uh, we've talked about maybe adding something else to our repertoire of things that we design and we manufacture. Now keep in mind that Tony and I do design all these products, we make these products, and we try to build the very best, highest end, anything that you can possibly find anywhere. And then bringing that to you at an affordable uh, price, that's that's a juggle, that's hard to do. But we've been able to do that. And uh, we're considering adding something else to our line. And so uh, we've got the facility now here, and it's, it's a nice facility. We've got lots of equipment and we can go further and if you have suggestions that you would like to write us and suggest that we do rabbits or we do uh, other pigs or whatever uh, we'd like to hear from you we really yeah. would and, and what specific problem do you have that needs a solution yeah. so give us some feedback put a comment in there and uh, we'll, we'll see what's possible and if you have something about our current products that you that we that we could probably improve on please send that as well we are like i said we're made right here in texas we're a u.s company and we understand english and if you tell us that that this has been a problem and and we'll look into it and we'll we'll better our product based on what you say so all right that wraps it up that wraps it up god Good bless work. you guys and and uh, oh, one other thing, it's uh, Veterans Day coming up this coming Monday. And uh, uh, I know the Pledge of Allegiance has been something that a lot of people don't quite understand anymore because of all the hype and stuff that's been going on. Now, I didn't talk to you about this, Tony, okay. but, but, uh, but he's got the blank look on his face like, where are you going? And so, but I, I, know. I know he's going to agree. <laughs> you know, uh, how many people out there remember Red Skeleton? Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that goes that, back. That's and, a shrinking crowd. It's but, a shrinking yeah. crowd. He's a shrinking crowd. But he was a comedian in my time. And uh, he was a school teacher for, before he was a comedian. And he taught his kids uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and the meaning behind the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, he did that back when we were 48 states and not 50 states. But you can Google it and just Google the Pledge of Allegiance by Red Skeleton. And uh, he does a wonderful explanation, line by line, of what everything that we would say during the Pledge of Allegiance in school and what it means to not only us, but God and our country. So it's really powerful. It's a good thing to look at for Veterans Day. And so i just leave that one thought with you. Google Red Skeleton, the Pledge of Allegiance. God bless our soldiers, God. past and present. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Yeah,